Section 2 of Hero Tales from American History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Dramco, Bismarck, North Dakota. Hero Tales from American History by Henry Cabot Lodge and Theodore Roosevelt. Section 2. Daniel Boone and the Founding of Kentucky Boone lived hunting up to 90, and, what's still stranger, left behind a name for which men vainly decimate the throng, not only famous, but of that good fame, without which glories but a tavern song, simple, serene, the antipodes of shame, which hate nor envy e'er could tinge with wrong. Tis true he shrank from men, even of his nation, when they built up unto his darling trees. He moved some hundred miles off for a station, where there were fewer houses and more ease. But where he met the individual man, he showed himself as kind as mortal can. The freeborn forests found and kept them free, and fresh as is a torrent or a tree. And tall and strong and swift of foot were they, beyond the dwarfing city's pale abortions, because their thoughts had never been the prey of care or gain. The green woods were their portions. Simple they were, not savage, and their rifles, though very true, were yet not used for trifles. Serene, not sullen, were the solitudes of this unsigned people of the woods. By Byron Daniel Boone will always occupy a unique place in our history as the archetype of the hunter and wilderness wanderer. He was a true pioneer and stood at the head of that class of Indian fighters, game hunters, forest fellers, and backwoods farmers, who, generation after generation, pushed westward the border of civilization from the Alleghenies to the Pacific. As he himself said, he was an instrument ordained of God to settle the wilderness. Born in Pennsylvania, he drifted south into western North Carolina and settled on what was then the extreme frontier. There he married, built a log cabin, and hunted, chopped trees, and tilled the ground like any other frontiersman. The Allegheny Mountains still marked a boundary beyond which the settlers dared not go, for west of them lay immense reaches of frowning forests, uninhabited save by bands of warlike Indians. Occasionally some venturesome hunter or trapper penetrated this immense wilderness and returned with strange stories of what he had seen and done. In 1769, Boone, excited by these vague and wondrous tales, determined himself to cross the mountains and find out what manner of land it was that lay beyond. With a few chosen companions, he set out, making his own trail through the gloomy forest. After weeks of wandering, he at last emerged into the beautiful and fertile country of Kentucky, for which in after years the red man and the white strove with such obstinate fury that it grew to be called the dark and bloody ground. But when Boone first saw it, it was a fair and smiling land of groves and glades and running waters, where the open forest grew tall and beautiful, and where innumerable herds of game grazed, roaming ceaselessly to and fro along the trails they had trodden during the countless generations. Kentucky was not owned by any Indian tribe, and was visited only by wandering war parties and hunting parties, who came from among the savage nations living north of the Ohio or south of the Tennessee. A roving war party stumbled upon one of Boone's companions and killed him, and the others then left Boone and journeyed home. But his brother came out to join him, and the two spent the winter together. Self-reliant, fearless, and the frowning defiles of Cumberland Gap, they were attacked by Indians and driven back, two of Boone's own sons being slain. In 1775, however, he made another attempt, and this attempt was successful. The Indians attacked the newcomers, but by this time the parties of would-be settlers were sufficiently numerous to hold their own. They beat back the Indians and built rough little hamlets surrounded by log stockades at Boonesboro and Harrodsburg, and the permanent settlement of Kentucky had begun. The next few years were passed by Boone, amid unending Indian conflicts. He was the leader among the settlers, both in peace and in war. 
at one time he represented them in the house of burgesses of virginia at another time he was a member of the first little kentucky parliament itself and he became a colonel of the frontier militia he tilled the land and he chopped the trees himself he helped to build the cabins and stockades with his own hands wielding the long-handled light-headed frontier axe as skilfully as other frontiersmen his main business was that of surveyor for his knowledge of the country and his ability to travel through it in spite of the danger from indians created much demand for his services among people who wished to lay off tracts of wild land for their own future use but whatever he did and wherever he went he had to be sleeplessly on the lookout for his indian foes when he and his fellows tilled the stump dotted fields of corn one or more of the party were always on guard with weapon at the ready for fear of lurking savages when he went to the house of burgesses he carried his long rifle and traversed roads not a mile of which was free from the danger of indian attack the settlements in the early years depended exclusively upon game for their meat and boone was the mightiest of all the hunters so that upon him devolved the task of keeping his people supplied he killed many buffaloes and pickled the buffalo beef for use in winter he killed great numbers of black bear and made bacon of them precisely as if they had been hogs the common game were deer and elk at that time none of the hunters of kentucky would waste a shot on anything so small as a prairie chicken or wild duck but they sometimes killed geese and swans when they came south in winter and lit on the rivers but whenever boone went into the woods after game he had perpetually to keep watch lest he himself might be hunted in turn he never lay in wait at a game lick save with ears strained to hear the approach of some crawling red foe he never crept up to a turkey he heard calling without exercising the utmost care to see that it was not an indian for one of the favorite devices of the indians was to imitate the turkey call and thus allure within range some inexperienced hunter besides this warfare which went on in the midst of his usual vocations boone frequently took the field on set expeditions against the savages once when he and a party of other men were making salt at a lick they were surprised and carried off by the indians the old hunter was a prisoner with them for some months but finally made his escape and came home through the trackless woods as straight as the wild pigeon flies he was ever on the watch to ward off the indian inroads and to follow the war parties and try to rescue the prisoners once his own daughter and two other girls who were with her were carried off by a band of indians boone raised some friends and followed the trail steadily for two days and a night then they came to where the indians had killed a buffalo calf and were camped around it firing from a little distance the whites shot two of the indians and rushing in rescued the girls on another occasion when boone had gone to visit a salt lick with his brother the indians ambushed them and shot the latter boone himself escaped but the indians followed him for three miles by the aid of a tracking dog until boone turned shot the dog and then eluded his pursuers in company with simon kenton and many other noted hunters and wilderness warriors he once and again took part in expeditions into the indian country where they killed the braves and drove off the horses twice bands of indians accompanied by french tory and british partisans from detroit bearing the flag of great britain attacked boonesboro in each case boone and his fellow settlers beat them off with loss at the fatal battle of the blue licks in which two hundred of the best riflemen of kentucky were beaten with terrible slaughter by a great force of indians from the lakes boone commanded the left wing leading his men rifle in hand he pushed back and overthrew the force against him but meanwhile the indians destroyed the right wing and center and got around his rear so there was nothing left for boone's men except to flee with all possible speed as kentucky became settled boone grew restless and ill at ease he loved the wilderness he loved the great forests and the great prairie like glades and the life in the little lonely cabin where from the door he could see the deer come out into the clearing at nightfall the neighborhood of his own kind made him feel cramped and ill at ease so he moved ever westward with the frontier 
and as kentucky filled up he crossed the mississippi and settled on the borders of the prairie country of missouri where the spaniards who ruled the territory made him an alcalde or judge he lived to a great age and died out on the border a backwoods hunter to the last end of section two